For this recording, I want to have a look at how you can draw a tennis ball in on shape. If you've done things like the basketball, you realise there probably is a way this can be done, but this is um, a pretty good way of actually doing it. Okay, to start off with, we're going to start off with a new part studio or a new document. Okay, as you can see, I've done this a few times here. So we're going to start as usual on the front work plane and with a new sketch. Okay. Press N so you're looking straight at it. I'm going to take our circle drawing tool, start from the center and drag out a circle and make this 100 diameter. I'm going to take my vertical line and split the circle from top to bottom going to the center like so. Press escape to lose the tail. Take your scissors and trim off half of the um, circle to leave a semicircle. Okay, it's coming. My internet is a little bit slow today. There, should go. There we are. Oh, it's taking a whole lot. A minute. There, that's it. Right. Then I'm going to click on my revolve tool. So I already picked up the first sketch here, face of sketch one, and then my axes, as with the basketball, is going to be this vertical line here and now I have a sphere. Okay, cool. I'm going to green tick that. Right, now what I want to do is I want to actually have a new work plane that's set from this. So I'm going to click on my new work plane tool here. It's going to be offset. Okay, so it's going to be clicked on the front one and I want to offset it half the distance, half the diameter of my circle, of my original sphere. So the um, the sphere was 100, so I want it to be at at least 50, that's, um, 50 millimeters. Okay, 50 millimeters. Brilliant. Green tick that. I'm going to sketch on this plane. So select that plane. Yeah, go sketch on that plane. You can see where it is it's in front of the of the ball there. Press N, so I'm looking straight at it. I'm going to start with another circle. And this time it's going to start from the center here. I'm going to drag it out, and this is going to have a uh, diameter of 70, 70 mil. Okay, like so. Then I'm going to take my rectangle tool here, corner rectangle, not the center rectangle, so not the center one, the corner rectangle. And I want to start this in line with the edge of the circle and in line with the center here. So starting from this point here, and I'm just going to drag out. A square. Now, if, if you go to the edge of the circle here, so you pick up that edge there, but don't click and then drag down, it will use that as a reference to help you make sure that you get it to be this, the, the right size. Should do. There we go. So I should see that line coming down. It doesn't matter if it doesn't, as long as it overlaps it, because we're going to set it to a particular size now anyway. So click. Okay. Um, I want it to be linked onto that circle there. So um, let's see. I could use. A coincident line here okay click on the top edge of my rectangle and the edge of the circle and that should bring it there now it's all black that's perfect for me okay or I can set the dimension of this to be the same as the, um, the diameter of my circle as long as I started it from this point here so it's exactly the same um, same geometry cool all right now I'm going to take our scissors and just cut out bits that we don't need so I don't need these lines in the middle here and I don't need that part there okay and I don't probably need this line here okay so I can take that off so I've just got that that arc shape there okay I'm going to green tick that so that leaves me with the shape that looks like that okay now I'm going to take my split tool so when I look here I'm going to look for my split tool which is this one here okay split and what we want to do we need to um, select the face and we're going to select the face that we want to split, and this is going to be the circle, sorry, the, the sphere. We're going to split onto that. And the entity that I want to split it with is this arc and this line, these lines here. Okay? And what that should do is draw a line onto my tennis ball, like so. Okay? So let's let and put a path onto my tennis ball. Green tick that. Okay? You'll notice this sketch is now hidden, which is fine. Let's hide our work planes for the moment so we can see the effects. So that's beginning to look like a tennis ball now. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to put my planes back on again because I now need to put a sketch that coincides with that um, with this line. So I'm going to do this on my right plane for a change. So click on my right plane, 
click on sketch and I want it to line up exactly with where this line meets here okay so let's press N so we're looking straight at it Good. pick a circle and move on to here now where it meets exactly on that point here is where I want my, my circle to be so there draw out a circle so let's make this um, three mil okay three mil there okay and then I'm going to take, I'm going to green tick that. I'm going to take my sweep tool, sweep here. This is my sweep one. So it's the third one along. Now for this, you have to select the face that you want to be swept. So that's going to be the little circle. And then you have to select the path that you want it to sweep along, which is going to be the line that we drew here. So click on that one, click on this. You can already see that a pipe is beginning to appear on the top surface of my of my, um, of my tennis ball, okay, my ball there. So that's gone all the way around. So that'd be quite nice if we wanted a raised effect, but we want it to remove. So let's click on our remove tool, okay? okay. And what that should do now is actually cut a groove into our tennis ball. Let's green tick this. There we have it. And now we have a nice groove going through our tennis ball. Let's press P so we can lose our work planes. There we have that, okay. now. So, um, I want to colour this now because at the minute it's blue, we don't tend to get blue tennis balls. So, I want to colour a particular colour. Now, what I'll, I'll do is right click on this and go to Edit Appearance. Um, I, I want to look for a custom colour. Now, there isn't that bright yellow here. I could go to Mixer and I could try and find the bright yellow. But one thing you might do is I found if I went to look for a neon yellow colour, I found that it had a particular code to it. So let me just go back to. Um, the sketch here, okay. If I click on right click on the, my part, my edit appearance on this, okay, I found there was a code called FFFF00, which gives me a nice neon yellow color. So let's go back to here, okay, and we'll right click on this, go to edit appearance again, and we're going to type in FFF000 there. See now we're getting that, that bright yellow color there. Right. So that's the particular hexadecimal colour for that, or RGB 255-2400. Green tick that. There. Now, now we can look at this interior part here. So if we zoom in like we did with the basketball, click on that part. And we'll click on the inside of this. So I'm looking for the double line there when I do this. So you may have to do this a couple of times until you get this right. So we want uh, that part there. Too many parts selected here. Oops, it's selecting it. I might need to double click on this, this one again because zoom right out and try to do it again. Right, so let's zoom right in. So we want you've got to make sure you get it so you get the double line. That's it there, that one. And the double line here, which will come up. I might need to zoom right in. There, that one. And I've got to go over to here, drag this around, get the double line there. And there's one last one, which is the back of this. Here we are, this one here. That's the double line there. That's it. Right. So I've got those selected. Right click, go to Add Appearance to Face, to Four Faces. And I'm going to do this nice white color there. So there. And then I've got my tennis ball looking cool there. Okay. Now, there is another part for adding um, text onto this, which is quite cool. So I'm going to bring back my, my um, work planes again. I'm going to use the work plane that I did here, work plane one. Okay, so I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to uh, put a new sketch on that work plane there. And I'm going to press N, so I'm looking at it. And for this, I'm going to take my A tool here, my text tool, and I'm going to draw a box out here. Okay, and this is the the area that my text is going to go into. So um, I might put um, tennis on there. Okay. So actually, let's do it in capitals. Yes, okay, like that. We can choose the font that we want it to be in. So I'm going to keep it on open sans, and I'm probably going to make it bold as well. Okay, click on my green tick. That will appear there. Now, it will appear as large because you can't set the height of the font or the font size, but what you can do is you can change the height here. So I'm going to use my dimension tool, click on the side, drag out, and set that to the height I want this. So I want this to be probably about 10. I think so it fits in, that's looking better there, yeah, okay. And then we can move this whole shape onto the um, onto the, the part here, I think. 
You should be able to move that. You take that line there. You take a dot. Oh, we should be able to move this. Um, let's to see how we can move this. Ah, that's odd. Why can't you move that? You may have to come off. I'll come off the dimension tool first. There we are. And then I can take it and then I can move it. There we are. Yeah. It's because I have my dimension tool still selected. So there. Okay, there. Now, I want to project this onto this curved surface. So I'm going to go along and find um, a wrap tool. Let's, let's green tick this. So that's on there. I'm going to find my wrap tool, which is here. Wrap there. Okay. So the tool I want to use is the lettering here. Yeah. And the target is the ball. Ah, now that's a problem with on shape. It doesn't like it on spheres. I remember that now. So we're going to try a different tool. Let's use instead the split tool here. I'm just um, delete that wrap to suppress that wrap tool. Remember, okay. Um, so we're going to use again face. We're going to use the face to split is the circle, is the sphere. So we'll grab that. The entity to split with is going to be our tennis symbol. There we are. Now it's worked. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So remember the wrap tool does not work on spheres. It only works on cylinders. Right. Okay. Green tick. And there we have the word tennis wrapped on our, on our ball there. Okay. And now let's hide our work planes. And now we can go on to each of our individual letters here. So there I can right click on that. I can add appearance to face. Let's put this as black. So I can put letters on there. So you might be able to pick up more than one letter. There we are. So there. And uh, let's move this over. That letter and that letter. There we are. Okay. I can right click and add appearance to face. Let's do black on that. There we are. And green tick. There we have our tennis ball with phrase on. And Ah, now it has gone through all the way through. Um, okay, that may be something else to have a think about, um, why that's done that. Anyway, it could be possible for us to, for us to use that way. Okay, thank you for watching.